Let's discuss all things CPAC with Fox News contributors Joe Concha and Pastor Robert Jeffress. Great to have you both with us tonight. Thank you, Shannon. Friday, Shannon. So Carl Rove writes an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal, the headline, Peril and Opportunity for Trump at CPAC. And he talks about the two different paths the president could take, former president. One approach would be to devote the speech to his anger and grievances over the election. Or he says he could help his supporters overcome their frustration by offering a forward-looking pro program of, of action, acknowledge Mr. Biden as president, and condemn January 6th violence. Pastor, what do you think he does? Well, I think the best thing for President Trump to do is present a vision for the future and to prosecute the case against Joe Biden after one month in office. And I think he can do that unlike anybody else. And look, I can't predict what the president's going to say, but I can predict with absolute certainty the conclusion people are going to draw, and that is that Donald Trump is still the driving force in the Republican Party. And a large reason for that is his continued overwhelming evangelical support. Today, in my own op-ed at Fox News, I explain why evangelicals would never side with the Republican establishment. They don't trust them. They feel betrayed by them, but they feel loyal to Donald Trump because he became the most pro-life, pro-religious liberty president in history. And you know, evangelical Shannon represent the single largest demographic outside of gender for the GOP. And while having evangelical support doesn't guarantee victory for Republicans all the time, not having that support guarantees defeat. Donald Trump has that support unlike any Republican in history, and I think that's why he's going to continue to lead this party. Yeah, and we'll see if he hits on those themes and those particular issues, which were such a winning point with that particular voting block for him tomorrow night. Uh, meantime, Joe, I, I'm seeing this growing chatter out there. A lot of folks on the Twitterverse, which is not the real world, saying things like any media outlet that plays any clips of the speech or takes it live should be banned forever. No one should be taking this speech. Don't give him a platform. He's a former president, but a lot of folks out there saying they don't want the speech on TV, on the web or anywhere else. Wow, they invented these things now, Shannon. Uh, they're called remotes, okay? So if you don't want to watch <laughs> the former president, you simply can change the channel or shut it off, go get some exercise, get outside. I, I love that uh, you have people on there dictating what can and cannot be broadcast, particularly, as you say, when it comes to a former president. Uh, but to, to the pastor's point, you know, predicting what Donald Trump will and will not do or say is like predicting when and where an earthquake is going to strike. It is virtually impossible. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but for the sake of conversation, yeah, this is the moment where the, Donald Trump will show the GOP is firmly behind him. I, January 7th, I would have said that could never happen. Uh, now it seems that everybody's coming back to Mr. Trump. You see these polls, about six in 10 Republicans, according to Morning Consult, say they want Trump to play, quote, a major role in their party going forward. That figure is up 18 points since January 7th. The majority of Republicans also want him to run again. So that's somebody who would have like a 40, 50 million vote head start if he were to seek the nomination. But people want to hear about the future. They want to hear him contrast his policies to what Joe Biden has shown so far in terms of his. They do not, I think, want to hear him relitigate the 20 20 election because that's only what gets him in trouble. So go with some basic themes here, Shannon. Talk about retiring Nancy Pelosi by taking back the House. Talk about the Keystone Pipeline and all the jobs that were lost as a result of that Biden executive order. Talk about the Biden administration putting kids back in cages because of those migrant facilities opening and a return of the swamp, a nearly $2 trillion COVID bill that has almost nothing to do with COVID. If he hits those themes and contrasts it with what he was able to accomplish, it will be a very successful successful night for the former president. Uh, Pastor, the final question for you then. Uh, Joe talks about looking forward and not relitigating the past, but what does President Trump need to say about January 6th? Well, look, I think he needs to say what he's already said about January 6th. Just say it again. I talked to the president after January 6th, and I shared with him my feeling that he is not responsible for what happened on January 6th. He asked his followers to go peacefully to the Capitol. He denounced uh, what they, uh, some did when they invaded the Capitol. It was despicable what these people did. I think he can just say that about January 6th. He does not have to say anything else about it. I think he He's done the right thing about January 6th. It's time to move on. 
All right, uh, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, gentlemen, we'll be watching as uh, a lot of folks will, except for those with their remotes, Joe, as you point out, and those who do not <laughs> want to, if they can go for a walk instead or watch them, you know, I don't know, wrestling or something else. There's plenty out there. Uh, Joe, Pastor, thank you both very much. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon.